Hello there, uh, M. Dot Strange here. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use mixed media character animation inside of Cinema 4D. Um, and as you know, or you probably don't know, Cinema 4D is my 3D application of choice because of its, I guess, kind of overall. That you can kind of do everything with it, and it's really easy to use. And I came from an After Effects background, and I just found it's very easy to go from After Effects to Cinema 4D. So the workflow I'm going to show you is what I used on We Are the Strange to get this character, Rain, and M, and all the other stop motion characters into the 3D world. So, um, But this not only works for stop motion, this could be a flash animated character, it could be a hand-drawn 2D animated character that you're scanning in, this could be a live action person, it's the same process, so I'm going to show you the same process. So, um, Like if you look at this character here, this is a stop motion puppet. And then these white things are 3D, and this other stuff's composited. So it's gonna. This is about how to get different types of media characters into Cinema 4D, animated with other objects and all that stuff. So what we have to do first is we need to define the transparency of the object because, as you know, if you just shoot something on the green screen, we have this image, and our footage is a square with green, which we don't want, right? Um, so what this is, this is just, you know, my stop motion puppet, and then with my green screen, and then I bought this little, like, arm thing. I bought it in Yokohama um, in Japan, but I'm sure you can buy it anywhere. It's just this little arm thing, and it has an alligator clip on the end, and then my models had an aluminum metal spine thing, and then it's just clipped onto a spine. So you're looking at this from the side. And if you look at this, it's just a run cycle. So this is just a run cycle, and then I went ahead and uh, cropped out the frames at the end so it could be a perfect loop, or whatever as perfect, perfect as I can get it. So what we want to do is we want to isolate this character. You know, we want to cut it out. We want to get rid of this green because we don't want him running around in a green square at this point in the movie, or whatever you're doing. So uh, if you're shooting live action, or stop motion, you're going to have to key it out. And this isn't really a tutorial about keying in depth, I just kind of want to show you the process. So key light comes with After Effects and it's really easy to use. So you just define the color you want to get rid of. And if you did a good job, you don't have to do that much work. And when I say doing a good job, um, working with green screen stuff, it's really all about the lighting. So if you lit it right, it's easy. If you lit it wrong, it's not easy. So um, Luckily, I've shot a ton of green screen stuff, so this guy was lit up pretty good. So as you can see, um, he's like keyed out. It's like a rough key. It's pretty good. And just because I'm tall and nuts, I can't stand looking at him all yellowed out, so I'm going to go and just take out the yellow. And I think I used some plug-in or something before, but it's kind of like whatever works for what you want to do. All right. So now, um, I could render out a QuickTime movie or, or Windows Media movie, whatever, but Cinema 4D really likes image sequences. They're the fastest and easiest to work with. So let's go render. And if you were doing this out of Flash, let's get rid of all these so it doesn't confuse you. You would just have your character um, with no background, you know, an invisible background, an empty background. And then when you render it or export it, you want to export it with an alpha channel and uh, as an image sequence. So I think it's pretty easy. Last time I used Flash, it was pretty easy to do. So we want an image sequence, and I'm sure there's other ones that work, but I, what I found to get the transparency over TIFFs seemed to work pretty good with Cinema 4D. And as you can see here with your options, usually when you render something out of Flash or any other program, it's just RGB. It's just the color information. But um, we want RGB plus alpha because that gives us the transparency information. So this is set up the way it's supposed to be. And then we just want to go to our render green runner 5. All right. And then now when you first start After Effects, if you go in here, it, it'll look black. Like it has black set for transparency, which can be confusing. So you just go up here and you turn on the transparency grid. So I'm sure you know this grid from Photoshop. All right. So we'll go back to the render queue. And then we want to render this. So now it's rendering out a TIFF image sequence of this run cycle which we're going to bring into Cinema 4D. Oh, with the magical sound, it's all done. Okay. So now we're in Cinema 4D, right? Standard layout. And what I used 
and what's the uh, I get the best thing to use is just to use a regular polygonal plane. So I'll in here in, in plane, and the polygons don't matter. We want the fewest number of polygons because you're not going to actually be cutting out the 3D geometry. You're going to let the alpha channel cut it out for you. So and just kind of shape it into the rough shape of what that screen was before. Okay, and now we need to apply it as a material. So double click here. Let's rename this rain. Double click it again to bring up the options, right? So we'll go into the color channel and click this button to load it. And what did I call that? I think I put it in the render, right? But this is the same thing, same file. I just did it before. Nope. And so you can see it loaded in here. And we want to click on this little image because we want to tell it this isn't, by default, it's just going to think it's one image, but we have to go and tell it this is an um, image sequence. So click this animation tab, and then click calculate, and Cinema 4D will look in the folder and look and see if it's a sequence and figure out how many are in there. So it says there's 19. I'm going to say I want it 24 frames per second. This is important. We want it to loop because it's our run cycle, right? And I want exact frames. So now, if I apply it here by dragging and dropping it, and disregard this stuff, this is just alpha noise, um, you can see that he's on this black cube thing, which we don't want. So you're saying, how come it didn't recognize alpha? It will, but you have to load it into the alpha channel here, or the alpha whatever in the texture. So you don't have to go in there and reload it and do all that. Cinema 40 makes it easy. Just click here and say copy channel turn on the alpha and then just paste it and as you can see now he's cut out and I like to use alias because it's just a little sharper so that's pretty sweet right because now he's in here and he's cut out so you can put stuff behind him you know like just to prove that there's really an alpha right but if I press play you can see nothing happens so when I did we are the strange this is how I had to do it you could not see your image sequences animated in the viewport. I would have to do test renders and check the timing and all that, which wasn't that hard, but now Cinema 4D allows you to see the animated sequences in the viewport. So you just go to the editor tab and click animate preview. So now if I press play, you can see now it's caching it, so it's kind of slow, but then it'll once it goes through once, it'll play faster. So it's caching it, caching it, and, yeah, oops, should be, yeah. So now you can see the animated sequence here in the viewport, right? And if we render it, there's like this rain dude running in the viewport. So um, now you can go ahead and let's just say we want to make this thing, oops, like a building or something. What's up with you, X? There you go. Okay, so this. What's up with you, 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 Z? So, um, let's put this back here. Let's make this bigger. I don't know why it's doing that. I must have clicked an axis on accident. On accident. Ha <laughs> ah, ha. That's not funny. Okay, so let's just go do that, and then move you over there, and move you over there, because these are super realistic buildings. Oops. Did not mean to do that. Click them all, Alt G to group them, and then Control Drag to duplicate them. Put some back there, over there. So this is just going to be a really rough. This is if it, he was just running through like an alley or something. Let's go add a floor, and then let's put some more just blocks here in the foreground. So he's obscured by something okay so now um, there he is in some fancy 3d scene but to kinda get a kinda better idea of what's going on here you know you wanna kinda make him look like he's in the scene so something you can do for that is to add shadows on stuff actually let's do hard shadows and then you go up to display and turn on shadows and it's not going to cut out his alpha but you know you don't really need that right now you just want uh, just to see where a shadow is so if I press render you can see that he has a shadow right a super sharp dark shadow dark shadow 8181 is out there probably watching this um, yeah 
So now he has a shadow, right? Okay, so now we want to animate him through the scene. So if you hold J and press left to right, you can scrub through time, just so you know. But in this layout, I don't have a timeline, so it's going to make me fail. Um, so let's switch to a different layout. Now what we want to do is, you know, here's our time. Go to, go to zero, and then grab his plane and push him off screen. Click add keyframe, and then go to the end and pull him all the way across and say add keyframe again. Okay, zoom in a little bit. So now if we play, you can see that he's running through the scene, right? With his like cool shadow on the wall or on the floor or whatever. Yeah. So then we can, what else can we do? Let's just add a camera and have it like track him for a little bit. Like he's so super fast, you can't follow him, oh my god. So now we're looking through that camera and then same thing, start over here. Click the camera then add a keyframe then let's go to the end move over and add another keyframe let's go back and now we can play this now the camera is trying to track him as he runs to the scene so you, you can see since you have an animated texture in the viewport like you know if this was any type of character drawn character live action whatever and you want to show him like punching this box I mean, having the animated preview would give you your timing cue, so at the part where his fist strikes his box, you know, it would like fly off, something like that. So having the animated previews makes it really easy. So now we just want to render this out so we can look at it in all of its glory. Um, yeah, it's glory. So we just want to say all frames, and let's do a JPEG sequence. We'll put it in here. Let's call it over because I'm so over this tutorial. Alright, and then you just click render, and now it's rendering it out. And yeah, so I mean, there are limitations. I mean, obviously, because he's just a flat piece of paper. Maybe I should pan around him to show that. So when you're working this way, you can really only move on two axes at a time, or two axes at a time. And what I mean, you know, there's X going across Y, um, up and down, and then Z going back and forth through space. So what I mean by that is, let's go to the other camera, you know, so right now we're moving in X and Y, right? As soon as I try to add in a third variable, like let's click on him, like Z, you can see that doesn't really work, right? So I mean, you can move on Z and, you know, X, but you kind of, you have to avoid moving on too many at a time because then it breaks the illusion and you see that he's just paper. But, I mean, you can be really creative and work around this, which I did on We Are the Strange, so. Um, going side to side, you know, across the screen, up towards the camera. You can do a lot of stuff. You just have to kind of, you think about it ahead of time. So, um, let's go over here and import that scene we just rendered. It's called Over. So, let's put it in here and let's check it out. So now we have our stop motion character running through the scene with a 3D shadow. So, yeah. I mean, and you know, it looks, depending on your setup and how well he's keyed out, it looks pretty good. If you can sync him in there or not. So let me just see what's in here. I wanted to show you something else. Just kind of how... Please open the computer just kind of how you you work around stuff uh, I don't know what's up with my Windows Explorer damn this XP should have never used it okay yeah um oh here we go this is another sequence so you know if you wanted to run towards the camera you would have something like this so you know you just think about moving on those two axes at once so then if we did this, we'd do the same thing where we would key him out and ex instead of having him move him across, you just have him on a plane moving towards the camera or what you could do is get this plane, put him on a plane in 3D. Here, I'll actually show you how that's done. Um, so what you would do is, oops, I want my single screen layout. 
is for to do a shot like that is you would put them on a plane, let's give it the one polygon, and move it so it's up on Z. So you would put them on this plane, and then you would make a camera. Well, this is how I did it. You'd make a camera. Let's look through this camera. And then you see here, then you would parent the plane to the camera. So when you move the camera, can you see that? So then you would just move the camera dolling backwards in space and it would look like he's running towards the camera. Right? And then there's all kinds of cool stuff. So if you wanted to make it look like he's running up and down, Cinema 4D has these vibrate tags. So you would say position. So now if I play this, wait, we don't want that. Like to make him bounce, you know what I mean? So this could be him moving up and down when he's running, and then you could change the frequency so it's like, well, not that fast. Maybe like that or something. Kind of know what I mean? So if he's moving in space, you know, like that, and then, yeah. There's just all kinds of things you can do for mixed media to kind of get the illusion across. So I'm going to go back. Oh, here it is. Well, whatever. Screw you, XP. I'm going back to, oh, no, I'm not. So, yeah, I um, hope you learned something. Oh wait, I don't have the copyright for that image. Um, hope you learned something. And again, this technique will work for Flash. If you're using Flash, you don't have to key. You just make sure you export your character with an alpha channel. If you're doing live action, you do the same thing. If you're drawing on paper, you would just scan it and then define the alpha channel in Photoshop by cutting it out using the magic wand or something like that. But it's the same thing. So um, Cinema 4D is, I guess, from the, you know the animated previews and all this stuff it's kind of perfect to do mixed media character animation so if you want to get into that or just 3D in general I would highly recommend Cinema 4D because I think it's the easiest and most powerful I mean you know everyone gets brainwashed about how you need to learn Maya and 3D Studio Max just because those are the status quo just because quote everyone uses them or they use them in Hollywood or at these game studios it doesn't mean they're the best it just means that it became status quo and if you look at the world around you and everything else just because something is the status quo it is not the best it just means more people use it or have accepted it and I mean you're watching channel I'm not strange not many people accept me and my films but you know and what I make but you know what you think about it so think about that like cinema 4d just because it's not the most popular doesn't mean it's not the best so if you're looking into 3d applications I highly recommend it and there's a really good um, community and the people who make it actually listen to the user so yeah if you want to get in 3d I highly recommend cinema 4d and until next time M. Strange is going to be scaling this cube up and down because that's how I get off okay till next time bye, -bye.